Michael Bay. Michael Bay. See, that's really all you have to say. You don't have to say anything else. You don't have to say it. Review over. Michael Bay happened. Congratulations. Transformers, Age of Extinction, Michael Bay, end of review. So, Transformers, Age of Extinction. A lot of things changed um, in this version. Uh, Shia LaBeouf is out. I heard he wasn't famous anymore, but if he wasn't famous, I don't know how I heard it. And he's not in it. And that was apparently Michael Bay's choice because he wanted to take it in a different direction. So he hires Mark Wahlberg, which Mark Wahlberg is a fine actor. In this, Mark Wahlberg is an inventor. Just let that sit there for a second. He's an inventor. I, it's just... I don't picture Mark Wahlberg sitting in a garage tinkering with mechanical, like, robots and stuff. I don't get that. I, it doesn't make any sense to me. So, in walks Nicola Peltz, and she takes the place of the last girl, who took the place of Megan Fox. And the last girl, I don't remember who it was. Do you, I, do you though? I don't. I'm sure she's a fine actress. They did everything in their power to make sure that she looked exactly the same as Megan Fox and the last girl. I mean, the makeup. I was thinking back to the other ones, and I'm like, they all look the same. That brings me to the product placement, which is perfect, because they laid it on thick. I mean, it was everywhere. It was there, and it was like, this is the brand that sponsored this film, and... You should have some. It, it was obvious and so therefore distracting. And that's exactly the opposite of what you want in any film. And that brings me to maybe my most annoying part of this. And that is every single character had these like one-liners. These comedic, funny, throwaway lines that are meant to get a quick laugh. They're these little sentences in the middle of action sequences where they shoot to one guy just so he can say one silly line about the situation they're in. A lot of movies use that, where they have one character who's like the jester, and it comes off as clever and funny, and you're like, oh, he's the jokester, all right, okay, I'm down with that. But when every character in your film is the jester, oh, it's so annoying. And the movie itself is just kind of a jumbled mess. And after a while, you're like, okay, this is kind of like the last film and the one before that. I mean, there's a MacGuffin, and like even in the first film, there was the AllSpark, and this, it's the seed, and this is what everything is going for. And they even threw in random stuff that just came out of nowhere, and you're just like, really? You gotta borrow from that too. Like, why? The sword and the stone? Oh my gosh, I don't... Yeah. Why? Another big problem I had with the story was that they didn't stick with one character. You're halfway through the film and all of a sudden, these people that were bit characters, the kind of people that would come on screen and you're like, Okay, well, it's nice that they got a line in the movie. All of a sudden, they're in the middle of the fray. They're in the thick of it. And they're running around, and the camera's following them. I'm like, don't you have other people that you're supposed to be... Uh, who are these people? Where did they come from? I thought you were in that scene a while ago, and then we were never going to see you again. Now you're here, and of course, you have... Clever one-liners that you have to throw out. These character pop-ins continued throughout the film. Where all of a sudden you're like, this guy is there and you're like, where did he come from? I didn't see you come in. And now you're here. Tell me how that happened. And it's never explained. We don't know. No one knows. I'm not even sure Michael Bay knows. 
There was another scene where the main characters, they have to make a choice and they have to find a way to escape or whatever. And the way that they do that, they come upon a situation. It's a crazy outlandish situation. It's one that any normal person would look at and say, not doing that. No, absolutely not. Let's find another way. These people look at it and say, yep, there you go. Let's do it. And it's just... a another device to get the characters in danger so there can be some suspense and they can do some CG stuff and it'll be nice and fun. And it wasn't. It was annoying. It was stupid. The saving grace of this film is Mark Wahlberg. He brings together a good performance despite the fact that his character's backstory is completely unbelievable. He plays a very different character than Shia LaBeouf. Shia LaBeouf uh, played a very timid, kind of a weaker character that had to kind of stay out of the fight. Mark Wahlberg has no problem. He's jumping in feet first and he's protecting people that he loves and he's shooting things and he's going after things and he's, yeah, doing Mark Wahlberg stuff. He's a bad mother bugger bug. And you like that. It's That's maybe the only thing that is different about this movie. At the end of the day, though, this film is not very different from the previous two, and there's a reason for that. If you start to look into the background of this film, you find that it's written by Aaron Kruger. When you look at Aaron Kruger's credits, you can kind of see why the writing is bad. It's because this is the guy that wrote Reindeer Games, and The Brothers Grimm, and Scream 3, and Arlington Road. Not exactly high marks. He's the guy who did the very last two movies, which were both not very good. And so once again, you're like, okay, well, if you're trying to do something different, why hire the same guy to write this film? It doesn't seem like Michael Bay is really interested in doing that. He says he is, but he's not. And there's probably a very good reason why. It's because the last two Transformers movies made a crap ton of money. They did. And this one is probably going to make a lot of money. Because people, for some reason, have decided that it doesn't matter if it's good or not. If it's Transformers, they're going to go see it. A lot of people are going to actually like this film. Even in my own theater, when the credits started to roll, the audience cheered in approval. They were clapping and I did not clap mainly because I thought it was terrible. It would be like if Batman and Robin was like a box office smash and people just completely just gave it a pass no matter how bad it was because it was Batman. And while Joel Schumacher would still probably be maligned, he would also be filthy stinking rich. And the studio would of course go back to him again and again for the next Batman and the next Batman because it made them lots of lots of money. But that's the problem. We don't get the change when we reward films like this. Batman and Robin was a box office failure, which is why they didn't go back to Schumacher for another Batman. They waited some time, and then eventually they got a very talented director by the name of Christopher Nolan, who gave us the Dark Knight trilogy and all was right with the world. But if we keep giving Michael Bay the same tons of money, then we're going to keep getting this kinds of stuff. As for me, I cannot in clear conscience recommend this film, which is why I'm going to give it a two and a half out of five. You know, this is one of those films that you could definitely wait to see on video or wait to see never. There are good movies out there that you can see besides this one. I would recommend those. So guys, what did you think of Transformers? Have you seen it? Are you going to see it? Have I talked any sense into that thick skull of yours? But seriously, if you like it or don't like it, you can always comment below and maybe we can talk about it. As always, if you like what you see, you can click right here and get more of beautiful me. What would be wrong with that? Not a darn thing, I assure you. Until next time, people like grapes. Oh,